Hello, thank you for joining us for another video. Before we start the video, I just want to quickly let you know that the actual footage of, and photographs of otters in this video were taken just after the current lockdown restrictions eased back in May. Excuse me. Uh, the reason for that is technical hitch. My memory card failed on us yesterday. So I got all, everything I was shooting on me on my vlogging camera was fine, but on my main camera, I didn't get anything. Didn't get anything. And I had been videoing and photographing two otters, but at exactly the same location, the footage you're about to see, same location, and it's most likely, can't be 100% sure, but it's most likely it's actually the same otters. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know in the comments below if you do or if you don't. If there's anything else you'd like to say, anything I can improve on. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you do like the video and you're not already subscribed. Here we go. Enjoy. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Great to see you all again. I've had a brilliant morning photographing and filming two otters. I'll show you some of the film and photographs in a while. Where I am today, I'm on the river, a stretch where I know there's otters. And I came up first thing this morning Uh, tell you what, let's get rid of the 3D stuff so you can see me first and then we'll talk. Uh. So it looks a bit elaborate or look camouflage, but when you're coming down and try to get close to waters, it's something that you do need because we've got the big reflective face, the reflective hands, any movements, these are amplified, otters are away. So I find otters, especially river otters, not too difficult to see one. If you want to go otter watching, you can steer back from the river bank, observe with binoculars, and as long as you steer downwind, off the skyline, dull your hands down, doesn't have to be the 3D gloves, but I would wear some sort of dark coloured gloves, and a cap. is an absolute godsend at times as well and just slow your movements down they're not too difficult to spot one because otters are a success story in the UK currently their num numbers weren't very high for the country if I go back some time ago. However, thanks to reintroduction programs and extra legal protection, there's now what is every major river system in every county in the UK. And the spreading. The location today, keeping to myself because not everybody is a fan of otters. Back to what I was saying, it's not too difficult to see one. To photograph and film them on the river, a little bit more difficult. Once you've located where your otters are, you've got to get in position with the, out, the otter smelling you, hearing you, or seeing you. Now, 
it's not too difficult to do that either because if you spot your otter from a distance or otters as was the case today they dive down for fish come back up they will often eat the fish at the surface if they're only little fish and then just dive down again so you've got to play the cat and mouse game every time otters dive down move a bit closer get ready stop before they come back up then when they dive down move a bit closer again Must ensure that you're downwind, careful of heavy footfalls, even underwater, that can still sense vibrations. So be careful of heavy footfalls. Take it easy, don't be in a rush to get there all in one go. If you have to wait for the otters, otter or otters to dive down ten times, so be it. Make your way to the riverbank, find a position, be set up ready or as much as possible so you can just get into a comfortable position this is where you need your 3D hat oh, 3D gloves, 3D hat on have these on before you start moving in once you get set up just sit and wait even if the otters have moved away a little bit quite often They'll come back down, they'll come back down the river. This has happened to me on more than one occasion. Once had two otters disappear up the river out of sight and within 20 minutes they were back. And this is one of the photos I got. I've covered the camera a bit as you can see just to dull down the white I could have brought a bag hide that's another great portable little hide for otters because you never know exactly where you're going to see them if you do have a spot where you have otters it's often worth getting there early and just setting up and sitting and waiting even if you don't see any otters as you get there, as long as you're downwind from the otters, that's the most important thing. There's a very gentle breeze today. I like it where there's actually more of a breeze, a bit of a stiffer breeze blowing. There's hardly anything today. But what there is, is very gently coming downstream towards us. So the otters I photographed were just upstream and upwind of me, so they couldn't smell me. And that was the most important thing. I actually, as a, <laughs> there's a kingfisher just gone downstream, just as, as we were talking, but I was lucky enough earlier I did see a kingfisher as well. I'll show you that little bit of footage now. It disappeared into this little notch in the willows and 
it must have been good 45 minutes later before it came back out to this position. So yes, this morning, as I started my hike up, up river, because it is quite a hike to get here, where I parked the car and as I got to the river, I spotted an otter there. Never seen one before. And I was like, I didn't have any of my gear set up. So I was like, oh, so I got back out of view, very carefully set stuff up got back to the water's edge and the otter had gone but then when I realised ah because the breeze was coming behind me what tiny little breeze there was but that just gently took my smell to that otter and it had gone but now I know where it is I'm going to look for another place where I might be able to photograph and film that from a downwind angle if the wind's in that direction again so that's one for future information so yes I've got the camera all set up here and ready I did consider bringing that bag hide today which I could have used I could have also laid on the gravel to get a more eye level view and if I'm going to come back to this well I am going to come back to this location it's one I've been to several times it's something I may well try but for that I'll have to set up with some sort of matting that I can lie on comfortably because I may have to wait some time something to remember with otters is although you do see them mid-river at times more often they hunt just on the edge of overhanging vegetation like these willows which is where I saw them today and they will often be inside those willows where they can hunt under cover so when you come up river looking for otters if there's nothing immediately apparent just take it easy and check every section because often they can be undercover and you would walk past without even seeing them another good thing is to use your ears listen tune into the water and then any splashes the otters water birds when they're feeding in the water you'll hear a separate splash they're not big crazy loud things they can be soft much softer but you will tune in if you listen for a while So the camera settings today set manual exposure started at f8 1 500th of a second and auto exposure 
sorry, Auto IX SO. And the reason I did that was because as the otters move in and out of the overhanging vegetation, sometimes they're in the shade, sometimes they're in the more open light, but that can dramatically change your exposure. So Auto ISO for me is always my go-to setting. I do have it limited to 1600 ISO, won't go any higher and I prefer with this camera anything 1125 or below because I find that gives a sharper image but you be the judge and what I have noticed while I've been talking there's what gentle breeze there is there's been a subtle shift and it's now coming this way and very gently going upstream that means my otter photography for today is at an end because my smell will now be slowly drifting upstream and the otters will be able to smell me. Now, for some of you, maybe just getting into wildlife photography, you get to see all these wonderful photographs online, in books, and you think, ah, oh, I wish I could do that. Don't know where to start. Don't know what to do. First thing I would say to you is get out there. You've got to get out there. If you want to get photographs of wildlife, you've got to go where the wildlife is. Learn a little bit about your subject and explore your local area. Find out what wildlife's there. Go for a walk along the river, a walk in the woodland. And don't be in a hurry to get from one end to the other. Take your time, slow down, look, listen, and you'll be surprised what's there. Yes, there might not be otters on your doorstep, but there will be wildlife around you that you can find and you can photograph. But then you can come out to places like this. And you know what, you, you, here's another thing, you often see f photographers with these huge lenses, five, six hundred millimeter, and yes, the wonderful lenses, but you can get wonderful photographs with much shorter lenses, shorter focal lengths. You just need to up your field craft a bit. A bit. Patience. It's always a waiting game. Bit of patience. The downwind thing is extremely important for mammals at the very least. And dulling the bright areas of yourself down, slowing your movements down, is extremely important when it comes to birds. Just a little bit of forethought will help you get much better photographs regardless of the equipment you have. Okay, so I head back now and see what we can see on the way back. There's always something to see.